NACA docs. We will explain the design principles, the theory behind it, and the purpose, and of course, the practical use, and how the, they achieved all the purpose, and of course, how it's easily adapted into cars and motorsports and racing. And this way, with all the understanding that you get, you might get an idea on how you can use it for your own benefit. <laughs> NACA duct was a design for the purpose of an inlet or an intake without being much of a drag unlike a scoop so this became a design for a submerged intake so it's actually designed and commissioned by National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics which is NACA was a United States federal agency founded on March 1915 so that's 100 years or so to undertake promote and institutionalize aeronautical research. On October 1, 1958, the agency was dissolved and its assets and personnel were transferred to the newly created National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or as we know it, NASA, which covers almost all of it including space travel and space exploration now. Of course, the design worked really well and because it's expanding the air slowly or gradually as and as the air slows down it increases pressure you know just like how the aerofoil of a plane creates lift it accelerates air and that becomes low pressure and the slow air becomes high pressure it's generating lift so it's be used in a lot of planes for their engines air inlet or air intake even for the heat exchangers such as radio radiator or oil coolers and many more because high pressure air is really good and dense when it comes to transferring heat or cooling without causing too much drag or at not at the expense of extensive drag so of course this was useful so useful that it trickled down to motorsports even cars like because the cars move forward and as faster as they go they take advantage of the cooling effect of what the NACA duct can do or is made for you can see it's in all the good cars and it's also to promote less drag so that you can go faster and at the same time do the job of the momentum or of the air based on physics and aerodynamics and as mentioned earlier, as it slows down air, pressure increases. This is good for carburetors, unlike fuel injected, that carburetors cannot take ram air or force the air into the inlet, but a NACA duct does its job really, really well. It benefits the carburetors really good. That's why Bisimoto race car of BC is Rioja runs a NACA duct back when he was still running a carburetor. The design properties are quite simple. As the vehicle, either car or plane moves forward, air enters and as it expands, it slowly slows down the air and by the expansion, it increases the pressure, making it efficient for cooling, induction or every other thing that's needed with the air. And so with the least drag, it's the most effective solution until you reach supersonic. So this is just subsonic solution. And that is why it's being used less and less by jet fighters now. But before, it was a lot. And I hope this is letting you guys visualize better. And as you go faster, the more efficient, the better it functions or provides what you need. The design principles and parameters are quite simple. Let me show you guys here. 
it's actually ideally the length has to be at least two to three times the width on this drawing of mine that i did the length is so twice the width so it's simple right it has to be at least two to three times the length of the width because air needs time to transition it cannot abruptly just change its form or direction that's gonna cause drag so a gentle and gradual transition is best now the entry angle or diversion has to be no more than three to five degrees on the first half at least of the length because the air needs time to transition like this here and if you need more angle for like let's say more volume you can add more after the first half but no more than three degrees from the current plane as you can see there's a lot of proper use or places to use an aqueduct properly and it's effective when used correctly like we've shown you earlier on this early rendition by naka it's an inlet for the plane that's giving the least amount of drag or almost zero drag and here on this plane this beach craft twin engine plane and also on this single engine aircraft which is also a single seater you can see the naka duck is doing its job efficiently quite efficient that it trickled down to old school race cars as you can see here because they have to minimize drag in order for them to have an edge over the competition even here the c-class mercedes-benz le mans racer and of course one of the favorites the lamborghini countach and my one of my favorite actually the 911 porsche look and even godzilla the nissan, nissan skyline gtr and yes the legendary the ferrari f40 and you can see it has several naka ducks because ferrari realized they can get all the air demands that they need without suffering excessive drag this is why this was fast for its day back then for the technology this was really fast and like most things we have seen it we just didn't know it prior and look even the quarter panel windows is often used to feed air into the cabin or into the cockpit for of course when you're racing you have to minimize drag and this is even on a couple of mustangs that's a naka duck right and of course a crowd favorite are you ready for this all right here even in nascar it's been used extensively you can see here and also here it feeds the cabin for all the needs of that you need of the necessary stuff that you need for air cooling or for cooling or venting here look at that right and also as we mentioned earlier that naka ducks take advantage of the characteristics of air or air's natural phenomena that you know nobody can cheat or change physics so this is how it is and you can see here with high speed air it becomes lower pressure and then the high pressure as the bottom is low speed air it increases so it generates lift right but look at this by simply inverting it it works the same with the same principles this time it's creating downforce and look and this part here is your diffuser so this will work if the other side here up front is actually doing its job they have to complement each other therefore if it's not then the diffuser is kind of useless and the reason why we mentioned this is because with the natural air phenomenon, the NACA duct is not excused. You will also experience the same thing. And so as we know, the NACA duct is a good air intake for cooling or heat transfer or even engine induction because it pulls in high pressure air. But just like the wing, it generates lift with this kind of phenomena with the high speed pressure and low speed air. And if you invert it, it does exactly the opposite thing. And of course, because humans are smart, we realized we can take advantage of this on a race car or on cars. And just like the Nakadat. 
on forward facing it's a good inlet or good intake for the air and if you reverse it it's actually a good way to remove air from the inside kind of like a good efficient outlet and the funny thing is we've probably seen this but we just didn't connect it to the principles of NACA duct well this what I'm going to show you now is not a NACA duct it uses the same principles a monster hood or a vented hood popularized in the import scene like for the honda toyota nissan mitsubishi look if you invert that's like an inverted naka duct it pulls air and remember i showed you this and you can see obviously there's a big naka duct on the side right but also this part does the same thing in reverse it pulls air you want to see more look at here that's a reverse naka duct it pulls heat out from the engine you know the hot air from the engine it gets pulled out here so that is interesting right we've seen this a lot of times but we had we just had no idea it was doing a reverse naka duct something tells me now you would always look at the monster hood or a vented hood a little different right because now we know the main purpose or the job it has to do but it doesn't end there. As you know, Formula One always led or was always leading on innovation and all the smart stuff, right? So look at this. Well, this is not a NACA duck. They still took advantage of the natural air phenomena and how a NACA duct works in reverse by pulling air out from the hot air inside. This old Toyota Panasonic F1. You can see here, that's pulling air they stuck it out to have a clear air stream but it still functions more like a reverse naka duct right it, it pulls out hot air from the inside and even here on the old bar honda f1 it still has it they stick it out this way there's a clear air stream that's traveling on top of it this way is creating good vacuum right so when you think about it now there's a lot of proper use on this right like hot air removal from the engine bay or just helping out the radiators exit the air and here even the modern f1 this is a petronas mercedes amg look they have it up top by the fin you'd never notice this because we didn't know what we we're looking for right but now there's always something to be found when you know what you're searching this is interesting right this is why i'm passionate about engine building and engine design and even race car building because you get an advantage but you get even a more advantage if you start to improve what you know about aerodynamics physics and all that because that is always non-negotiable the more you know about it the bigger advantage you can have and so you can click here for our velocity stack ram air video because it revolves around aerodynamics and physics we try to take advantage of the natural phenomena and try to get even better improvements you know you like this one and also on this one this intake design video because this actually closely complements this naka duct video and one another because we try to expand air to increase pressure so you know this one is actually perfect right Perhaps sooner than later, I'll be able to start designing this duct thing that I was doing because it's to expand air. This way, the radiator is functioning even more efficient, right? And that is why we have a hood spacer on my EG. It's either that or we have to run a monster hood of some sort just to remove hot air from inside the engine bay. And you know, it's going to be good. And so at the end of this video, we'll have an end screen about the playlist of all the shop work that we've done. So you can enjoy checking every one of it because for everything that I do, I always take physics into account. So, you know, because it is important.